Legendary Passages, Episode 78, Fourth Argonauts. The Argonauts Assembled from the Fables of Aeginus. Previously, Phrixus escaped from his mother Eno on a flying golden ram to Colchis. This time, more details on the families of Eno, Antiopa, and Jason. Antiopa was a daughter of Nycteus and had by Jupiter twin sons named Amphion and Zetas. She was captured by Lycus and his wife Dersi, but when her sons grew up, they avenged her. Amphion became king, married Niobe, and had many children, most of whom died. Anyway, Jason, on his way to a sacrifice, helped an old woman cross a stream and lost one sandal. King Peleus had been warned about a one-sandaled man causing his death, so he gave his nephew Jason the quest to retrieve the Golden Fleece. Fortunately, dozens of heroes volunteered to join the expedition to Colchis. The Argonauts Assembled A Legendary Passage from Gaius Julius Hyginus Fables 4-14 through 14, Translated by Mary Grant Eno of Euripides. When Athamas, king in Thessaly, thought that his wife Eno, by whom he begot two sons, had perished, he married Themisto, the daughter of a nymph, and had twin sons by her. Later he discovered that Eno was on Parnassus, where she had gone for the Bacchic revels. He sent someone to bring her home, and concealed her when she came. Themisto discovered she had been found, but didn't know her identity. She conceived the desire of killing Eno's sons, and made Eno herself, whom she believed to be a captive, a confidant in the plan, telling her to cover her children with white garments, but Eno's with black. Eno covered her own with white, and Themisto's with dark. Then Themisto mistakenly slew her own sons. When she discovered this, she killed herself. Moreover, Athamas, while hunting, in a fit of madness, killed his older son, Lyrchus. But Eno with the younger, Melisertes, cast herself into the sea and was made a goddess. Athamas Because Samel had lain with Jove, Juno was hostile to her whole race. And so Athamas, son of Aeolus, through madness, killed his son with arrows while hunting. Cadmus Cadmus son of Agenor and Argiope, along with Harmonia, his wife, daughter of Venus and Mars, after their children had been killed, were turned into snakes in the region of Illyria by the wrath of Mars, because Cadmus had slain the dragon, guardian of the fountain of Castalia. Antiopa Antiopa, daughter of Nycteus, was by a trick violated by Apophis, and as a consequence was cast off by her husband Lycus. Thus widowed, Jupiter embraced her. But Lycus married Dersi. She, suspecting that her husband had secretly lain with Antiopa, ordered her servants to keep her bound in darkness. When her time was approaching, by the will of Jove, she escaped from her chains to Mount Cytheron, and when birth was imminent, she sought for a place to bear the child. Pain compelled her to give birth at the very crossroads. Shepherds reared her sons as their own, and called one Zetos, from seeking a place, and the other Amphion, because she gave birth at the crossroads, or by the road. When the sons found out who their mother was, they put Dersi to death by binding her to an untamed bull, by the kindness of Liber, whose votary she was. On Mount Cytheron, a spring was formed from her body, which was called Dersi. Antiopa of Euripides, which Aeneas wrote. Antiopa was the daughter of Nycteus, king in Boeotia. Entranced by her great beauty, Jupiter made her pregnant. When her father wished to punish her on account of her disgrace and threatened harm, Antiopa fled. 
By chance, Apophis, a Sicyonian, was staying in the place to which she came, and he brought the woman to his house and married her. Nycteus took this hard, and as he was dying, bound by oath his brother Lycus, to whom he left his kingdom, not to leave Antiopa unpunished. After his death, Lycus came to Sicyon, and slaying Apophis, brought Antiopa bound to Citheron. She bore sons and left them there, but a shepherd reared them, naming them Zetus and Amphion. Antiopa had been given over to Dirce, Lycus's wife, for punishment. When opportunity presented itself, she fled and came to her sons. But Zetus, thinking her a runaway, did not accept her. Dirce, in the revels of Liber, was brought to the same place. There she found Antiopa and was dragging her to death. But the youths, informed by the shepherd who had reared them that she was their mother, quickly pursued and rescued their mother, but slew Dirce, binding her by the hair to a bull. When they were about to kill Lycus, Mercurius forbade them, and at the same time ordered Lycus to yield the kingdom to Amphion. Niobe Amphion and Zetus, sons of Jove and Antiopa, daughter of Nycteus, by the command of Apollo, surrounded Thebes with a wall up to, here the text is corrupt, and driving Laius, son of King Labdacus, into exile, themselves held the royal power there. Amphion took in marriage Niobe, daughter of Tantalus and Dione, by whom he had seven sons and as many daughters. These daughters Niobe had placed above those of Latona, and spoke rather contemptuously against Apollo and Diana, because Diana was girt in man's attire, and Apollo wore long hair and a woman's gown. She said, too, that she surpassed Latona in number of children. Because of this, Apollo slew her sons with arrows as they were hunting in the woods, and Diana shot and killed the daughters in the palace, all except Chloris. But the mother, bereft of her children, is said to have been turned into stone by weeping on Mount Cyplus, and her tears today are said to trickle down. Amphion, however, tried to storm the temple of Apollo, and was slain by the arrows of Apollo. Chloris Chloris was the only daughter of Niobe and Amphion who survived. Neleus, Hippocoon's son, married her, and she bore to him twelve sons. When Hercules was besieging Pylus, he slew Neleus and ten of his sons, but the eleventh, Periclymenus, was changed to an eagle by the favor of Neptune, his grandfather, and escaped death. Now the twelfth, Nestor, was the one at Ilium. He is said to have lived three generations by favor of Apollo, for the years which Apollo had taken from Chloris and her brothers he granted to Nestor. Children of Niobe Tantalus, Ismenus, Epinitus, Phaedimus, Sipilus, Damascathon, Archinor, Niera, Ithia, Astacradia, Chloris, Eudoxa, Agigia. These are the sons and daughters of Niobe, wife of Amphion. Peleus An oracle bade Peleus, son of Cretheus and Tyro, sacrifice to Neptune, and told him his death was drawing near, if a monocrepus, that is, a man wearing only one sandal, arrived. While he was making the yearly offerings to Neptune, Jason, son of Aeson, Peleus's brother, himself eager to make sacrifice, lost his sandal as he was crossing the river Evenus, and in order to arrive promptly at the ceremonies, failed to recover it. When Peleus noticed this, remembering the warning of the oracle, he bade him procure from King Aetes, his enemy, the golden fleece of the ram which Phrixus had dedicated to Mars at Colchis. Jason, calling together the leaders of the Greeks, set out for Colchis. Juno When Juno, near the river Evenus, had changed her form to that of an old woman, and was waiting to test men's minds to see if they would carry her across the river Evenus, no one offered till Jason, son of Aeson and Alcimede, took her across. But, angry at Peleus for failing to sacrifice to her, 
she caused Jason to leave one sandal in the mud. Argonauts assembled. Jason, son of Aeson and Alcimede, Clymene's daughter, leader of the Thessalians. Orpheus, son of Oagris and the muse Calliope. Thracian, from the city which is on Mount Olympus near the river Eponius. Prophet, player on the lyre. Asterion, son of Antigona, daughter of fairies, from the city Pelene. Others call him Hyperasius, from the city Piresia, which is at the foot of Phileus in Thessaly, a place where two rivers flowing separately, the Apidanus and the Eponius, join into one. Polyphemus, son of Alatus by Hippia, daughter of Antippus, a Thessalian from the city Larissa, lame of foot. Iphiclus, son of Phylacus, by Periclymene, daughter of Minius, from Thessaly, Jason's maternal uncle. Admetus, son of Pheres, by Periclymene, daughter of Minius, from Mount Chalcodonus, whence both town and river derive their names. His flocks, they say, Apollo pastured. Eurytus and Echion, sons of Mercury and Antionira, daughter of Menetus, from the city Elope, which is now called Ephesus. Some authors think them Thessalians. Aethaltides, son of Mercury and Eupolemia, daughter of Myrmidon. He was a Larissian. Coronus, son of Canaeus, from the city of Girton, which is in Thessaly. This Canaeus, son of Alatus, a Magnesian, proved that in no way could the centaurs wound him with steel, but they did so with the trunks of trees sharpened to a point. Some say that he was once a woman, and in answer to her petition, Neptune, for her favors, granted that she be turned into a man and be invulnerable to any blow. This has never been done, nor is it possible for any mortal by invulnerability to escape death by steel, or be changed from a woman into a man. Mopsus, son of Ampicus and Chloris, taught augury by Apollo. He came from Ochelia, or, as some think, he was a Titeresian. Eurydamus, son of Iris and Demonassa, others call him son of Satemnius, who dwelt in the city Dolopius, near Lake Zinius. Theseus, son of Aegeus and Aethra, daughter of Pythias, from Trozen, others say from Athens. Perithous, son of Ixion, brother of the centaurs, a Thessalian. Minotius, son of Actor, an Apundian. Erebotes, son of Teleon. Eurytan, son of Iris and Demonassa. Ixition, from the town Cerinthus. Oileus, son of Hippodacus and Agronomi, daughter of Perseon, from the city Narcia. Clytus and Iphitus, sons of Eurytus and Antiope, daughter of Pilo, kings of Ochelia. Others say they came from Euboa. Eurytus, taught archery by Apollo, is said to have contended with the grantor of the gift. His son Clytus was killed by Aetes. Peleus and Telamon, sons of Aeacus and Andeus, daughter of Chiron, from the island of Aegina. These left their country because of the slaughter of Phocus, their brother, and sought different homes, Peleus, Pythia, and Telamon, Salamis, which Apollonius of Rhodes calls Athis. Butes, son of Teleon and Zeusipi, daughter of the river Eridanus, from Athens. Phileros, son of Alcon, from Athens. Tiphys, son of Phorbus and Harmine, a Boeotian. He was steersman of the ship Argo. Argus, son of Polybus and Argia, some say son of Danaeus. He was an Argive, wearing a black-haired bull's hide. He was the builder of the ship Argo. Phleasus, son of Father Liber and Ariadne, daughter of Minos, from the city Phlius, which is in the Peloponnesus. Others call him a Theban. Hylus, son of Theodamus and the nymph Menodice, daughter of Orion, a youth from Ochelia. Others say from Argos, a companion of Hercules. Nopleus, son of Neptune and Amion, daughter of Danaeus, an Argive. Idmon, son of Apollo and the nymph Cyrene, some say of Abbas, an Argive. He was skilled in augury, and though he knew of his coming death by birds that foretold it, he did not shun the fatal expedition. This passage continues next episode with the launch of the Argo and its first adventures.